come in. Hi, hey, nice to see you. Hmm. Come and have a seat. Oh, just got this this lovely um, Scottish pipe by the maker Charles Rattray going. You were asking me the other day about why I have so many pipes. I mean, if you take a look around, you can see, I suppose I've got a few one way or another. Um, and of course, strictly speaking, you don't need many pipes. Even if you decide to smoke a different one every day, you'd only need seven. But I suppose my pipes, me, apart from the pleasure that I have in, in them, which is rather, as I've said before, like the pleasure of collecting conkers as a little boy with the grain on each pipe, so different. For me, the pipes all have memories or associations or their pipes for certain occasions, like I think I told you before about this one that I got as my talking pipe because I'd been given some lectures on talking, so I I bought it in Oxford, Talking's Town, in sort of memory of that. And most of them are associated with perhaps a, a lecture tour or a poetry reading or a visit to relatives or something where I think I'll buy a pipe and I'll commemorate that. This one, this very beautiful um, Charles Rattray pipe, um, is particularly poignant because I um, I bought it in the hope of showing it to my mother. My mother really liked the fact that I smoked pipes because uh, she found it quiet and companionable and it reminded her of her father who smoked a pipe. and. He used to sit in his chair in the evening and smoke a pipe and when she was a little girl she'd be allowed to go and sit on his knee and he would recite poetry to her. And of course my mother used to recite poetry to me and one of the pleasures that we had during my mother's last years was when I went up to see her in her little cottage right up in West Westeros on the shores of Loch Broom was that uh, she'd asked me to take out my pipe. She liked the smell of the tobacco smoke and sit in an armchair beside hers. And we would recite poetry. And my mother had the most wonderful fund of poetry. And she'd recite a poem and then I'd recite a poem and sometimes we'd recite a poem together. And so I got one or two Scottish pipes by Charles Rattray because I'm fairly sure Rattray made these pipes in Perth from 1903. My mother was born in 1918. And I'm pretty my, sure that my grandfather, who's a real Scot and a Scottish patriot, would have had a Scottish pipe. And none of his pipes have come down to me, but I rather hoped that by having a, a Scottish one, there'd be that connection. And I think there was. So the poignancy about this one was that I had another one. This is a little, uh, another lovely uh, Charles Rattray, which I'd taken up and shown my mother. It's got a Celtic cross on the bottom of it. And I, I ordered this one because I imagined that I was going to see my mother in mid-August. And I ordered this one in time to arrive before I set off. But then, of course, the emergency came that my mother was not at all well. And my sister said, you must come sooner rather than later. So I left before this pipe ever arrived uh, and um, as uh, you know, as I've told you, I was there in time, thanks be to God, and I spent two or three days with my mother and then she died on the 1st of August and we were all at her bedside and bidding her farewell. And uh, I came down, as you can imagine, disconsolate and there waiting for me, <laughs> having been posted to me, was this very pipe, the pipe I would have delighted to to share with and show my mother but um, alas she never saw it so now I take it out and I, I, I smoke it quite meditatively and I take down from the shelves let me just the books I know particularly of the poets I know my mother loved here's Edmund Waller for example a great late 17th century cavalier poet this is a lovely early edition. It's um, as Waller himself. Uh, and this is an edition from 1744. My mother loved to recite Waller. Two poems in particular 
the go the famous go lovely rose tell her that wastes her time and mine and also the less well known poem on old age which she would recite very reflectively so maybe as i smoke this pipe and um, think again on her perhaps as age advances on me i could read you that one um but maybe i tell you what I'll try and do what my mother would have done, what I sometimes did with my mother, which is not to have the book in your hand at all, but just to recite this poem. It's a beautiful reflection on the losses and the gains in the end of getting older. The seas are quiet when the winds give o'er. So calm are we when passions are no more, for then we know how vain it was to boast of fleeting things so certain to be lost. Clouds of affection from our younger eyes conceal the emptiness which age describes. The soul's dark cottage, battered and decayed, lets in new light through chinks that time hath made. Stronger by weakness, wiser men become as they draw near to their eternal home. Leaving the old, both worlds at once they view that stand upon the threshold of the new. I love that line, that final line. Wonderful. I had to write a poem about old age that begins with, uh, that ends with the line stand upon the threshold of the new. And the body itself is the soul's dark cottage letting in new light. It's one of the last things I ever heard my mother recite. Stronger by weakness, wiser men become as they draw near to their eternal home, leaving the old, both worlds at once they view, that stand upon the threshold than you. Thanks for dropping around.